Hey guys, Master Ningen here bringing you another Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle video and today we are joined by a friend of the channel, Omnitoast. Say hello. Yo, what's going on guys? Omnitoast here. Thank you so much for having me on the channel, my man. Today yeah. we got a lot of fun stuff to talk about. Oh yeah, so this is part two of a Super Saiyan 3 category discussion series that we have started. So part one is on Omnitoast's channel where we go over Bardock and our picks for the main team. Uh, the link for that will be in the description. So make sure you go and check that out first because that gives you a good idea of the team and the kind of setup you'll be looking at. And then come back to this part where we are going to talk about some of the new awakenings that are being added when this team comes out as well as some of the units that we will get in the future or maybe not get in the future which will be the Dragon Ball Heroes ones. So, so there's quite a few to talk about so what we're going to do is we're going to start off you can see on the screen here we have got the AGL Super Saiyan 3 Kid Goku from GT so this unit awakens this was the one that I showed if you make sure you've seen part one uh, he was the guy I'd picked for the sixth slot on my team Mm -hmm. um, and this is the awakening that he gets so his leader skill is not particularly great it's an all types but 60% no key so not really going to be using him for that um, he does the super Kamehameha which is supreme damage raises attack for three turns which is pretty decent concentration on battle this is passive attack and defense plus 90% at the start of the turn and then he has a very basic Super Saiyan 3 link package uh, he also has mm -hmm. GT um, and of course he picks up Fierce Battle because he awakens from the Super Saiyan 4 Goku Dokkan event medals um, so his counterpart if you want to talk us through him on the toast oh I would love to because the Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta GT so so as we all know Dokkan likes to shaft Vegeta's <laughs> and um which is why I'm really happy on Dragon Ball Legends Vegeta is like one of the top tier characters right now but uh uh but yes the Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta GT I believe he Dokkan's uh where are the me I forgot the medals that are needed uh, the, the Super Saiyan he is the Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta medals so basically you Dokkan awaken him with 35 he uh has an all types key plus 3 and HP attack and defense plus 30% leader skill. So, I mean, a little bit better than Goku. You lose a little bit of uh, strength, HP, and defense. But you at least can get key from him. Yeah. Um, again, you're never going to use him for that reason. <laughs> uh, his super attack, of course, is the final flash. Causes supreme damage to an enemy and defense plus 30% for three turns. So he does get a little bit tankier. But as we all know, there is a better Super Saiyan 3 Vegeta for tanking out there. Yeah. Um... His passive skill is Explosive Energy, Attack and Defense, plus 90% at the start of turn. Again, not same as uh, Super Saiyan 3, AGL, Kid Goku. Um, same thing, he's got the basic Super Saiyan 3 linking package along with GT and Fierce Battle. Um, eh, there's better There's better, There's better. better Super Saiyan 3 Vegetas out there. Well, that's, well, there's one particular link that is missing, which is uh, where the Vegeta shaft comes in. And uh, he does not have over in a flash. Oh, yeah, he does not. He also, he also does not have prepared for battle. <laughs> so oh, you poor, He doesn't poor share thing. key links with anyone on the team except for potentially Golden Warrior and Royal Lineage if you're using one of the other Super Saiyan 3 Vegetas because he's GT, so you can use them together. But, I think I just died a little bit on the inside. <laughs> so one of his main key links is mm. GT, which he's only going to share with the AGL Goku. So yeah. this is where... Vegeta Shaft comes in. This is why I chose the Goku for the sixth slot on my team. So I'm flicking between the two you can see here on the screen. They are very, very similar. They both get attack and defense 90%. They've got similar stats. They both do supreme damage. Goku raises his attack, which means he's going to hit harder over time. And Vegeta raises his defense, which, again, he's not going to tank that much better, especially against super attacks, just by giving himself a small defense bonus. Exactly. So they're basically very similar, except that Goku is pretty much better in, in every yeah. sense. Plus, because, the Goku, and it's, it's just because of links. Yeah, even just the link, and I think uh, personally as well, even if their links were the same, I think like the raising attack for three turns with the super is be definitely better than the uh, yeah raising defense. Especially since we're we're in, one thing is like we're in a era where 
you want to do as much damage as humanly possible. Not many people worry about tanking as much. Yeah, or they exactly. not many people want to waste a uh, slot in, with tanking. Yeah, exactly. So, and plus the other added bonus, I mentioned it briefly in part one, but the Goku also has a semi-farmable super attack. Uh, there's a physical SR Kid GT Goku that Dokon away. Yeah, with there is that one. Three, and yeah, you can use him to farm his super attack. So, and of course Vegeta as with most Vegeta's in the game, doesn't have a farmable super attack. So the units are built very, very similarly, but just, yeah, Goku's pretty much better in every way. Exactly. Which is uh, a bit of a shame, it, but... It hurts. hurts my pride. <laughs> yeah, hurts, pretty, my, uh... hurts my Saiyan pride. <laughs> but, you know, we're kind of used to that from Dokon now. So Yeah, uh, Goku's always had a lot of good cards. Vegeta... Mm. Yeah. So I think the only reason, if you had to pick between them for that sixth slot, I think the only time you're ever going to pick Vegeta over the Goku is if you're doing a tech event. Because you might as well. Because obviously if you're not putting orbs into them without crits, the Goku's going to have type disadvantage. That's probably the only time you'd bring That'd be the only time, instead. man. That or I would just switch them out for the STR Super Saiyan 3 Kid Goku with the Golden Ape ability. Yeah, exactly. So I guess it depends who you've got available to you. So if you have to pick one of them for your sixth slot, I would definitely recommend the Goku. Uh, we should be getting, it hasn't been in the news, so I don't know if it's dropping on the same day, but we should get one of those category support banners that they normally do, where you get the three models. I don't think it's the same stones. day, but I think it's um, coming. Yeah, it'll definitely come soon. And the these two units are featured, so they'll be one of the units that you get, potentially. <laughs> so it's a good bit of insight for them. So, the next one card we're going to go over uh, is the sort of mini leader for the category, which they've been doing a lot recently. Summonable SRs uh, that awaken, who give you a smaller version of the category leader skill if you don't pull the Dokon Fest unit. So, you will have seen, I'm sure, many, many times in your multi summons, the SR AGL Super Saiyan Bardock. Uh, he gets a Dokon Awakening into a Super Saiyan 3 as well. So, he gives the Super Saiyan 3 category, as well as AGL in and physical units. So, just like the Bardock that you can summon from the banner, he has a secondary skill if you don't have a ton of Super Saiyan 3s. I'm assuming they did that because the category is so limited for units, because uh, mm -hmm. you're probably often going to be having to sub in a unit that isn't a Super Saiyan 3. So, he gives them all 2 key, HP, attack and defense 40%, which is not terrible for some of the mini leaders that we've seen. A lot of them have like 20% or... Yeah, some defense, of them are either 20 or 30%. Or, yeah, so... He's actually, I think, the strongest mini... one of the strongest mini leaders. Yeah, it definitely uh, seems to be. So, his super attack is the Rebellion Trigger, supreme damage to enemy and lowers defense. Uh, the super attack animation is the same as the Marseillean one, which I think actually looks really awesome when uh, Super Saiyan 3 Bardock does it. So... Mm -hmm. uh, that's pretty cool. Passive skill, fired up Saiyan, is attack plus 80% when performing a super attack. Defense plus 80% for 5 turns from the start of the turn. So that's actually fairly decent as well, to be fair. Um, oh yeah. I keep forgetting that he is awakened from a summonable S uh, SR, so I keep thinking, wow, that's good for a free-to-play unit, but I, he's not technically free-to-play. So. No, he's a but, summonable SR, but... If you if if people are summoning on this banner, you're going to be seeing a lot of him. Oh yes, he will be a featured SR. Plus, even if you are free to play, you will have summoned at some point. So you may have summoned that SR Bardock. Mm -hmm. So you'll be able to get him a, a lot easier, uh, even if you are free to play. So, yeah, he's pretty decent. Obviously, you're only ever going to run him if you don't pull the int one because they're the same character, so you can't use them both. Um, he's probably not a top pick for a super AGL team. Um, no, I mean, I might can, I might run him on mine just to see how he does, but yeah, probably not. It's probably worth testing out on there. Plus, like the Int Bardock, he's a good bridging unit in terms of links because he has over in a flash and prepared for battle, so he'd be a good linking partner if you have the easy A AGL Goku on your super AGL team, I guess. Yeah. So... so we're going to go over this guy last. So one of the things we're going to cover is the Dragon Ball Heroes units. Mm -hmm. So these are three Super Saiyan 3 characters that are non-canon from Dragon Ball Heroes. And um, we may never get them. 
and we may never get them because nothing from Dragon Ball Heroes has ever come up to global and potentially never will but we're going to cover them very briefly so which one would you like to start with I'll let mm, you pick. I'm going to I'm going to call dibs on my favorite my favorite okay. of the three so let's see. and that is the AGL Evolution of Combat Super Saiyan 3 Trunks there we go um he is an AGL type key plus two attack and defense plus sixty percent leader. Uh, super attack is burning attack causes supreme damage and raises defense by thirty percent for six turns, which is pretty decent. Um, his passive skill is need for evolution attack and defense plus sixty percent. Disables enemies guard and has a high chance to guard against all attacks. Like this guy is actually pretty decent. He's got over yeah. in a flash limit breaking break it, limit breaking form. Um, of course, since he doesn't doke on Wicked, doesn't have fierce battle or anything like that yet. Um, he's a good, he's a nice unit. I wish, again, I really wish this banner would just come to global. I really don't <laughs> understand why they don't want to bring it because I want him. Yeah, I think but... from from what I hear all over the uh, internet, it's because of licensing issues for heroes outside of Japan. Yeah, but... which is. Hopefully, who knows? Maybe we'll get lucky and it'll change a little bit with the heroes anime. Yeah, That's I'm hoping that if the yeah, I'm hoping if the anime does well, then maybe we could see those licensing issues get sorted out. But you never know. Yeah. So, so I'm gonna pick my favorite, which uh, I'm I'm surprised is not your favorite. Although the trunks is cool, but so here we have for tech the Super Saiyan three Gotenks team, often <laughs> referred to as adult Gotenks. So. Uh, he awakens from, on the Heroes banner originally, there was just an adult Gotenks in Super Saiyan form. Um, and then, to much to everyone's surprise, because I don't think any of the other Heroes units actually have awakenings. No, he's uh, the when, only one. Yeah, when the Super Saiyan 3 category... Oh no, was it, it was when physical Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks came out, wasn't it? This mm -hmm. guy got an awakening and became a Super Saiyan 3. Um, so his leader skill is not great. Tech types 2 key, attack and defense 70%, so no HP, so... You know, never going to use him as a leader. Uh, he does the burning Kamehameha, which is supreme damage and raises attack for six turns, which is pretty good. That's quite yep. a nice build up, especially if he's a main rotation unit. Uh, attack plus 100% when performing a super attack is his passive. And link skills, again, very basic Super Saiyan 3. Very similar, in fact. I think he has all the same links as the Super Saiyan 3 Go Tanks, apart from the Innocence, I think. So, yeah. Obviously, if you're using the physical Super Saiyan 3 Gotenks on your Super Saiyan 3 team, as he is one of the top picks, this guy's an awesome link partner for him. Uh, yeah, he's definitely my favorite one. Uh, I think it's quite surprising how good he actually is, considering mm -hmm. he was a random awakening no one was expecting. So yeah, he was uh, he was optimal, I think, on the team when it first came out. On he's actually so, a very, very powerful unit, even just for tech. Yeah. So. Um, well, with that being said, I'll take the final of them. Yeah. Um, and that's, of course, the Intelligence New Heights Super Saiyan 3 Gohan Teen, which is the weirdest of them all. Because <laughs> Super Saiyan Teen, Go Teen Gohan as a Super Saiyan 3 is just disturbing. Yeah, he does look um, odd. He's the he looks, it just, it's just proportioned <laughs> weird. Um, leader skills, of course, is in type key plus 2, just an attack and defense plus 60%, just like the trunks. Uh, super attack is fierce Masenko wave, causes supreme damage to enemy and raises attack for six turns. Uh, passive skill is col collision of the best, attack and defense plus sixty percent. Additional attack sixty percent when performing a super attack, so that's, he boosts himself. And of course, he has Super Saiyan, Saiyan lineage, Saiyan warrior race, experience fires, over in a flash, and the midbreaker form. Again. Decent card. They still never got their awakenings yet. Um, I don't know if they ever will. Actually, yeah, these might be not, units that but... they'll never give units uh, awakenings for. Yeah, but yeah, he's a good. Uh, he has it because he shares experience fighters with Bardock, and if you use him on Super In uh, Gogeta as well, so that's quite a useful extra mm -hmm. link for him to have. Um, plus, with that additional, that is a, uh, that additional sixty percent is essentially like a lot of Dokon Fest units that have attack up one hundred and twenty percent when performing yeah. a super attack. So that is actually. A very strong passive for a unit that isn't a Dokkan Fest exclusive, so he exactly. is. He's pretty good. So I think he's the only one I managed to pull on my JP. So he's uh, he's pretty good on the Super Int team. 
Um, so, the last one that I was going to cover very briefly is this guy right here, the Intelligence Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Um, you may not have seen this guy if you don't follow much of JP, but he is the unit that we get given for free uh, when the third year anniversary happens, which should be a bit over a month from now. So, you get five copies of this guy so you can open up all his paths. Um, he is another mini Super Saiyan 3 category leader so if you have never pulled the AGOSR Bardock this guy will eventually become a leader that you can use uh, unfortunately he only gives 33% to stats and 3 key so it's not the best but obviously if you don't have the Bardock that will at least allow you to run the team um, he does the Super Kamehameha which is supreme damage and raises attack for 3 turns and then his passive he's actually a support unit for the team so he gives Super Saiyan 3 category units attack and defense plus 33% which is a pretty decent boost mm -hmm. um, the only problem with him uh, again his links are nothing too special they are very typical of a Super Saiyan 3 <laughs> very Goku basic so, but the, the downside to this guy so even if you do pull Bardock he, you know, that team doesn't really have a support unit other than the GT Kid Goku and he only boosts attack so he seems like he'd be a really good pick for the team. The only problem is the fact that he is Super Saiyan 3 Goku. So you've got the LR, which, you know, a lot of us are not going to have. Uh, the AGL Extreme Z Awakened one, who is very, very powerful. And then there is the Strength one as well, who is mm. kind of the forgotten one. But he is still a fairly solid unit. Um, you'd have to run this guy over any of them and maybe aside from the strength one if you had any of the other ones you, you're going to be running them instead yeah so I feel i'm not like... gonna lie i would love to see the strength one getting you know, extreme z awakening yeah because if the agl one becomes such a good i mean he was always good but it becomes such a great unit uh after the extreme z awakening so and they are awakening a lot of more random uh, units. I don't think anyone would have predicted the family Kamehameha units getting one. No, so. that was that was out of left field. Yeah, so he definitely could see something interesting. So, obviously it's Goku because he is the anniversary giveaway card but I feel like for this card to really have been usable on the team it should have been somebody else. But, yeah. I guess who else, who else would you pick? Because there's already... <laughs> a limited pool of uh, Super Saiyan 3 characters and when they start going into the what if territory that's where we cross over into heroes and then probably don't get them so exactly. it's, uh, it's understandable that he's Goku but unfortunately it does make him a little bit less of an option but like I said he does give you the capability to run the Super Saiyan 3 team as a free to play unit without having to pull the intelligence Bardock so at least that would give you the opportunity to run the team so yeah but it's definitely not bad. So, there you go. That is a brief overview of the Super Saiyan 3 units that are coming or potentially never coming. But just to give you a more expanded idea of the category and what it's going yeah. to look like in the future. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything else you can think that you wanted to add? Mm. <laughs> Shockingly, no. <laughs> then again, that we... could be that could be a combination of work taking it though my past two days of work taking its toll on my head, or the fact that it's three almost three in the morning and I can't think of anything. <laughs> I think it's I think it's also the fact that I feel we've comprehensively covered everything else that we need. I to think we've hit this. every possible between the two videos. I think yeah. we've hit everything we could possibly hit with this uh, subject. Yeah. So hopefully you have seen part one. This is now going to be the end of part two, so this will give you a full idea of the category, what it looks like and what it potentially can look like in the future. So hopefully that will help you decide if you are on the fence whether you are going to summon for Bardock and uh, run this team. I know I'm going to be summoning for him. So I'm going to try to do what I can, but yes, I'm going to try to summon for him too. Uh, so, yeah. I'm trying to save up a lot more for the three year. <laughs> I need to get that LR Gogeta. Oh yes, the three year is coming. So, But yeah, I will be streaming my summons. You guys can see that on the channel. So hopefully we will see you there. Um, and that is going to be everything. So yeah. if there's nothing else, then we are going to say goodbye. Yep. Um, this has been The Masked Ningen and Omnitoast. You can join the Discord. The link is in the description. Uh, 
usually hanging out there so we can discuss anything from the video and uh, yeah anything else you wanted to say no or but just I just want to say off? I just want to say thank you so much for having me on the channel and like I said make sure you guys go check out part one if you haven't already uh, if you're one of those people that watch videos backwards I'm not judging <laughs> but uh, yeah thanks for having me man yeah, no worries. And make sure you subscribe to uh, Omnisoast channel while you're over there. Show him some love. He puts out great content as well. So uh, yeah. hopefully we will be doing something else together in the future. So. Oh, yeah. I, I, I got a nice firm boot to kick your butt with in a race <laughs> one day, don't I? Well, yeah, I think we, uh, since we've covered the Super Saiyan 3 category, maybe we can uh, race the Super Saiyan 3 teams if, you, mm -hmm. uh, if we both pull Bardock. So. If we're lucky enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, that's going to be it, guys. So I will see you all again soon. Have a good one. Peace.